I mean, I, 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 mean, I don't want you to get uncomfortable being standing right here while I do this. No, no, I'm not. Here's Go the deal. On. Go on. Uh, all right, so I, it is my, I, so you already know that I love this person, this woman here. Uh, Casey, um, uh, here's the, we are, I'm so fortunate to be a magician, an entertainer, in the, in, in the entertainment industry, and to be with somebody who's also so highly talented. And uh, that's, a, that's a rarity. So, let me tell you, Casey is not only a singer, you're a fiction writer, you're an actress, you're a musician, you, you write your own material as well. All of it, right? She's been on the Sundance Channel, she's been on the USA Network, and that you'll see her coming up uh, next year next season, but we can't talk about that. Uh, I have seen, and, yeah, I know, I'm totally, ask me about it outside, I'll tell you all about it. Uh, Animal Planet, right, where you actually have to sing on, on a show as well. To Bigfoot. To Bigfoot, to Bigfoot. They were hunting for Bigfoot, and in the woods, she sang a song. I don't know. Uh, it was fantastic, it was fantastic. Uh, and I'm going to read this, because I want to get it right, okay? It's good. She has a, a quote that I think is spectacular. Chuck Dalphine. Uh, I just passed away. He I have passed, to say, I'm very yeah. sad because he was a great um, person and a great champion of mine. So, sorry. Like two days ago. Yeah, I know. Oh. So, from Billboard magazine, here's what he said As a vocalist, she walks the line between traditional and contemporary sounds. And when she performs, she knocks out some notes that will leave you wondering how did she do that? So, and as a magician, that's pretty cool. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to hand it over to you. And Chip, Chipper? I, I, I keep calling you Chip. Skip, flip, Chip. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, know. Chipper and Casey Wednesday. Thanks, guys. Joe, you love it. Do it. 
so we're sticking with it. Like so, uh, <laughs> they ain't go back now. Alto, no. That's the town next door. They claim the same, but they're wrong. <laughs> anyway, uh, I grew up listening to a lot of country music, as you might expect, and one of my heroes that I grew up listening to was Miss Patsy Cline. Yeah. yeah. So I'm gonna do a little Patsy for you. singer from the 50s and the 60s, so I wrote a song called Blame You for Trying. Hmm. And this may surprise you, but I'm about to sing it now. <laughs> <laughs>
different venues, and uh, I think I even came to your house at some point while I was on that tour. Holy cow, that was Minnesota in February, I believe was my first time, and I was like, what life choices have led me to this moment where I said, yes, let's go to Minnesota in February, and my mom's like, you don't understand the kind of cold they have. I'm like, no, mama, I'm fine. Mama, I know about cold. I'm from Texas. She's like, no, really, you can so uh, that was an eye-opening experience. And I was like, why do people live here? <laughs> but then I went back in the summer, or maybe it was the spring, I can't remember, and it was gorgeous. And I was like, all right, I get it. So you suffer for a few months, but then you get the reward of the beautiful, I mean, just the scenery was breathtaking. So anyway, long story short, I'm gonna do that song for you. Sorry ain't enough. Amen. <laughs> shot a video for it, so when you go home, get on the YouTube. <laughs> Unless you're opposed to teddy bear violence, then I recommend you look away. <laughs> it's pretty intense. Look at you with the cat plug in. Heard you might have lost a new girlfriend. Then, not, not, not. Guess 
So really happy to be back in Santa Fe. It's a wonderful, Woo! beautiful city. Yeah. So thank you Come on back. for welcoming me to the city here. Indeed. Uh, really, you come here. When I first heard about Santa Fe, before I visited, I thought, oh, it's a desert. I don't know I'm going to like that because it's hot and it's a desert. And you really step off the plane, and there's just a magic in the air. Different kind of magic. But it really <laughs> is a nice, wonderful place to live. So thank you for having us. Really happy to be here. Chipper here lives in Taos. Yeah, uh, buddy. Like but I don't know, I've never been to Taos, so I don't know if there's anything you want to share about Taos, or we, we have this time to tell stories. We have time to tell stories. Really? A short story. <laughs> like a flash fiction. Like a flash fiction? Yeah, like a two-pager. On text. <laughs> Two people played a gig. Nailed it. It ruled. All right, the more can you ask for? So we're going to do a new song. It's called Ghost. I've only performed it live about three times, so I uh, thought I'd subject you guys to it. <laughs> I've never played it live. Yeah. yeah. So, but considering it's October, it's the month of Halloween and of spooky things, why not? What more spooky sound? You want it to be spookier? I think we're good. <laughs> we, we don't want to over spook the situation. <laughs>
staring in the dark, yelling at the world, trying to fight back the tears. Reaching towards the sky, wishing you were near, cause I need you here. Cause you're harder to hold, harder to hold than more. And I'm still sleeping with you. The ghost you left behind I can feel you here Lying next to me Just like gravity Brought me to my knees So quick Didn't see it coming Cause you're harder to hold Harder to hold the most And I'm still Sleeping with your ghost Wherever I am It should be called a surfabilly song. <laughs> so uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna use that, but I'll credit you at, at least while we're in Santa Fe. And then when I go back to LA, I'm gonna be like, so I thought of this wonderful uh, <laughs> this wonderful term. It's called surfabilly. I made that up. Trademark, PC. Yeah. Uh, and actually, we wrote it for a film project. So it was a lot of fun to do. And we took it into the studio back in Texas, and my uncle produced it. He was a producer in Nashville um, back in the '70s. Worked with some hit maker, so it was a lot of fun to get to do a project with him, and uh, hopefully the film will get made, so, uh, you know, send good thoughts, and if you see a, if you see a, uh, so, uh, Lord, Lord Jesus, Lord, Lord, I'm tired, <laughs> the altitude done got me, if you see a uh, film called The Projectionist, listen for yeah. this song, I went really hard on that, and this is very appropriate, The Projectionist, Projectionist, because, hey, yo. you know. Without you guys, it's pretty dark and sad up here. <laughs>
because it's the cash cabin. So there's a lot going on in here, in here, and also out here. There's the mic when I walk in, and it's low, and I'm like, oh, hey guys, uh, can we guys lift up the mic? And they're like, oh yeah, sorry, Loretta was in here earlier. I'm like, I think I can make this work. Like, you didn't clean it yet, did you? Because... So I sing the trick, no, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> so this production group comes in to watch me record this song, which was already recorded. So it was basically me standing in there thinking, like, is is my shot being blocked? How do you know? How's this going? And then I'm thinking it's a television show. It's a reality show. It's not real. We're gonna go like stand in a park somewhere and say, Bigfoot, are you here? And what I found out is um, that when you host a television show called Finding Bigfoot, you believe that you could find Bigfoot. Yes. <laughs> and I didn't have that information up front, but it actually turned out to be one of the most fun things I've done. So myself, the uh, cast, and the crew were all out in the woods in Nashville doing um, what are called Squatch Knocks. So it's you get a tree and you get a bat, which they provide. It's, it's fine, you can show up in that one. And uh, you do Squatch Knocks and then you... <laughs> I'm lying, I'm dying. Okay, and then you listen to see if the Squatch responds, mm -hmm. um, and they think he does. I don't hear it. But when you say, like, I don't know, I don't know that I heard that, it, like, they look at you like, yeah, it could have been. It could have been. I think, you know what? Shh, shh. Yeah, definitely. Squatch not. Heard it back. So uh, this song is called Living in the Moment, and they really wanted Bigfoot. And I think there's multiple. It's not just the one guy. But they wanted him to be in touch with his Zen self. Mm. So, who's living in the moment? <laughs> How many times do I get to tell that story? Come on. Yeah, I've never been to get to tell the story either. <laughs> so, Casey calls me up and says, yeah, all these songs are on YouTube. You want me to hold that thing? If you need. Yeah. I'll just okay. yell. Uh, Casey says, all these songs are on YouTube. And, you know, the songs you haven't heard, you can check them out and kind of learn them and stuff. So I Googled and YouTube Living in the Moment. And Casey dedicated it to the cat, Marshmallow, <laughs> which is this big thing, kind of like Bigfoot, actually. Yeah, it's like yeah. the abominable snowman. And I, I went so another way. 
<laughs> we had we had some stumbles in our rehearsal because I I kept going, is that the marshmallow song? <laughs> <laughs> it's true. So now you gotta all go look up on you have a list of homework. Yeah. It's raining up, living in the moment. Bigfoot. Marshmallow. <laughs> to be in the audience. She came all the way down from New Hampshire. I know. It's big. Her name is Judy Pancoast. Sitting right there. Judy! So she's a very talented singer-songwriter in her own right. Um, I've talked a lot, so I'm going to just say you'll have to Google, but Grammy nominated. Uh, she wrote the musical for Christmas with the Dead. I mean, just so much talent in that one chair right there. And uh, she sent me a group of songs and said, hey, I've got some songs that never really did anything when I was writing in Nashville. Would you like to take a look at them? And I, sure, let me take a look. So I listened through, and then there was this one that stood out, and it started, um, I would say, it was very 80, late 80s and early 90s, kind of, it was uh, upbeat, it was da-da-da-da, da-da-da, it was beautiful and in her, in her wheelhouse, exactly as it was. And I listened to it, and I thought, you know what? I wonder if I could make this like a little bit swampy Texas style. And uh, she gave me permission to do that. We tweaked a few things. We changed a little bit of the music. 
but the, the essence of what she had to start with is definitely still shining through. The hook is strongly hers, and I'm very, very excited to sing what will be uh, next spring when I'm on the new uh, that we can't talk about uh, starting 2020 on the USA Network. <clears throat> uh, this will be the song that we release, so it's called Good Girl. Oh yeah, no, I skipped it. Sorry. Did you not read my mind? Is that not? Did you not do that? Do we need more stories? I have a magic act where I read. <laughs> you know, I'm used. To, you know, I'm so used to not having to say anything. I just look at him, and then we do this, and then he tells me what I'm thinking, and um, it's usually wrong. But every once in a while. <laughs> No, the joke, he actually does a trick where he memorizes the Time Magazine. I don't know if you got to see him do that. And he <laughs> actually memorizes a Time Magazine. That's the trick, wow. sincerely. And so I get mad at him when he forgets something. It's not like, you can remember a Time Magazine, but you can't remember to get bread at the store? Like, it, it never, you can remember a Time Magazine, but you can't remember to pick up the mail. So, yeah, it's it's not easy at our house. It's, it's not easy. So. <laughs> Jeanette, I'm doing you a favor. <laughs> it's exhausting. What are we doing? Do we need another story? All right, so I have this trick where I memorize a time. <laughs> All right, so back to... Good Girl, the story I was telling you about. Very excited. Uh, we recorded this back in Texas because I wanted to do sort of a back to my roots sort of compilation. Be going back in to release a new album soon. So if you still buy music, check it out on iTunes or all the other places where music is. This is Good Girl.
Kevin, I want to thank everybody for your help, for setting up, Chris, for being great on tech, everybody who helped out with that. Yeah, Chris. Uh, Jonathan Levitt, thank yeah. you. Yeah! magic. Yeah. He's good with the words <laughs> and, and the uh, expressions of love. Hi, Magazine. And they're also in here. <laughs> And Jeanette. I mean, let's honestly, let's honestly thank Jeanette because this was a very different night because she was so awesome. So thank you all so much for having us. Really appreciate it. The theater, everybody that has staffed here and, and worked to make sure that we had everything we needed. George, thanks for having us. We're going to uh, finish yes. out with one more by a Texas girl, a little Bobby McGee. Just before it rained, he runs us out the way to New Orleans. Oh, I pulled my pool out my dirty bandana, was playing Tommy while I was playing the blues. With the wind, she was a slappy time, and Bobby's hand in my wee mind, it sang up every song that drive a new. Oh, no.